Hey, welcome back. We'll be talking today about different types of microphone designs. Two basic designs. Pressure device, commonly known as omnidirectional. Pressure gradient device, often known as directional. So I'm sitting down working through the footage of the video that I recorded outside and I realized that I should first go over the basics of, of what microphones even are. Essentially, a microphone is a device that converts acoustic vibration of air molecules into a vibration of electrical current in the form of voltage. So, you make a noise, vibrates the air molecules, the air molecules vibrate within the microphone. The microphone detects those vibrations and converts those vibrations into electrical vibrations, which then can be recorded onto devices that remember what those vibrations are. We play them back through speakers, which effectively are microphones backwards. A speaker diaphragm is no different than a microphone. They both convert acoustic um, vibration to electrical vibration. A speaker, you know, vice versa, but it's the same principle. So there's many different uh, types of microphones themselves that all use that all can have these different um, pickup patterns that I'm talking about. The pickup pattern is refers to the directionality of the microphone. The two that I'm going over today are omnidirectional and directional. This microphone is a directional mic. I believe hypercardioid, and I use it for dialogue recording, primarily use it for dialogue recording indoors. Um, the shotgun microphone, you get weird interference with reflections off the walls. I think this sounds better inside. But, sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. Despite the pickup patterns, despite the directionality of the mic, there's different technologies that microphones... There's, there's different technologies that are used to convert sound waves into electrical waves. The two most common that you'll see uh, include condensers, which all the mics in the video today are condensers. Condensers require external power. Um, these days, most recording devices have uh, what's known as phantom power built in. It's a direct current DC voltage that is applied to the microphone, powers it, and allows the microphone to be more sensitive. Essentially, it's an active device. This microphone is also a condenser. It's a large diaphragm condenser. This mic that I'm recording on would be considered a small diaphragm condenser because the diaphragm is small. On this mic, you can see the little circular thing. The little circular thing inside of there is the diaphragm, large diaphragm condenser. The other most common microphone you'll find, especially for music recording, is dynamic microphones. This is a dynamic microphone, and dynamic microphones do not require uh, phantom power, so they are more of a passive recording device. Uh, they're le less sensitive, and so they're more frequently used for music recording, um, guitar amps, vocals, that type of stuff, pretty common. Not as common for field recording, production sound, 
because you kind of need the sensitivity of condenser microphones as well as the portability. Um, you can have little condenser mics that are tiny and they pick up massive sound. It's just, I suppose you could use dynamic mics, but again, since you have, they're passive, so you have to turn your amplification up, you have to turn your preamps up more to get the same level of sound, thus you get a lot more noise. So if you're field recording, condensers are your best bet. There's many other types of microphones, um, such as uh, piezo mics, um, ribbon mics. Those are somewhat a little less common. They're still used sometimes for music recording. Ribbon mics is probably the, the third most common. And then the ones after that are um, not frequently used. A little background. I'm mixing on the Zoom F8 N Pro. Mixing live. Saves time in post. The first type I'll go over, omnidirectional. This is a earlier design, if I remember correctly. Essentially what the capsule consists of is a diaphragm is a thin sheet of material, either foil or plastic, cellophane, etc., that is completely encapsulated on all sides except for one, one open face on the top here. It's going to be inside of that little mesh screen. The one face is exposed to the air, and the rest of it is sealed. The way an omnidirectional mic works, which is why it's called a pressure device, is because it's one face exposed to the air, it simply picks up changes in pressure in the air around it. And the, change, the rapid changes in pressure are what we perceive to be sound waves. So from all directions, the omnidirectional mic effectively, effectively receives sound equally from all directions, hence the name omnidirectional. Picks up sound from every direction. It's simply picking up on the changes of the air around it, right? When you make a sound, the waves expand outwards in a sphere. And so a pressure device will pick up those changes. One of the, let's go on to the next one. Pressure gradient devices is the next one. Most commonly known as directional mics. These include cardioids, hypercardioids, figure eight, super cardioid, etc. This very mic is a Han MBC 440. It is a cardioid small diaphragm condenser microphone. And what makes directional mics directional is the principle that they work under, which is called pressure gradient. So with these types of microphones, both sides of the capsule are exposed to air. Now you can see on this mic, there's little vents along the side here. Little vents that allow air in in very specific ways. So, the, re the result, based on how the air is routed around the diaphragm, results in direct directionality. Um, based on different positions of the mic, 
if this cardio head mic picks up sounds in front of it, but does not pick up sounds from behind it. <laughs> exactly how that works kind of escapes me. Um, I haven't done a crazy amount of research in it, so I'm not going to claim that I know how it does. But effectively, effectively, the sound waves coming in from the front, the pressure, the pressure sensed by the front of the microphone is different than the pressure sensed by the back of the diaphragm. So based on the way that the waves around interact on the diaphragm, certain, certain frequencies will cancel will cancel out based on where they're coming from. Sounds coming from behind cancel out in the in the 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 signal that comes from the microphone. Hence the name directional. Speaking of exclusion, the shotgun mic gives us extreme directionality. When I move it away from my mouth, you can't practic you can't practically hear anything unless I'm super close. And even then it's very muffled. This would allow us to get maximum voice isolation. Say if you're booming for a film, it sounds quiet and intimate. Whereas our omnidirectional mic You hear everything going on around. Which is better? Well, there's no answer for that. It's whatever you need for your situation. So, let's get into the... Those are the technical differences. Let's get into the practical differences between the two. I'm already holding the cardioid, so I'll start with this one. With directional microphones, we have what's known as proximity effect. Now... What proximity effect is, is, um, sorry. What proximity effect is, is in directional microphones, as you get them closer to a sound source, the bass frequencies increase disproportionately so. And when you move it further away from a source, the bass frequencies fall off disproportionately. So up at close ranges, there's an enhanced bass response. And at far ranges, you lose bass response. We will note, again, that since this shotgun is a directional microphone, we experience proximity effect. Ready? Hmm. Quieter, yes, but also the bass uh, distribution changes. So this can be used to your advantage in certain things. Say you are recording a kick drum. The closer you get the mic, the you'll get a lot of bass from it. But it can also have negative effects, such as if you're recording an orchestra and you have the mic... 20 feet away from the string basses, your whole orchestra is going to sound very thin and weak. So, if you're recording an orchestra, they use omnidirectional mics to preserve that bass response. And for um, if you're podcasting and uh, you want your voice to sound rich and, and full, you can get a mic super close and then you sound super awesome same thing with uh, field recording if you wanted to get a crazy bass response say you banging on a dumpster and you want you want that bass sh uh, chest shaking bass you put a you put a directional mic super close to that you get that response that you're looking for you want a thinner sound.
That right there is the benefit of a directional mic. You can select which sounds around you you want. I don't know if you've noticed, but the traffic noise for me standing here talking with this mic is going to be less than an omnidirectional. Now I just turned up the omnidirectional and you hear all of the sounds around me, which could be desired in certain situations. If we are recording for a film, for recording dialogue, you're not going to get this problem with the directional. If we're recording dialogue for film, we use shotgun mics, which are extremely directional mics. With omnidirectional mics, we don't get that proximity effect in the bass. I put the mic super close to my face, yeah, it's louder, but the bass isn't dramatically enhanced. I move the mic further away from me, and the bass isn't dramatically reduced. Gets quieter, right? But the bass gets quieter more proportionally to the high frequencies. It's not thinned out the way that the cardioid mic is from a distance. So it really depends on the type of sound that you want and the isolation or inclusion of the sounds around you in your environment. So get out there, play around with the mics. See what suits different scenarios. And I'll see you next time.